What's up guys, Curtis here and welcome to a brand new FIFA 21 squad builder. Today we're going to be building a 500k team. This is for those of you that have got a little bit more coins in your bank now and have a little bit more to spend. Maybe you bought some FIFA points, maybe you got lucky with a poll in an SBC, I don't know. I've had some unreal pulls this year. I've only put in 24k FIFA points and I've got about 2 million coins. So I'm buzzing, my return has been amazing. We're going to build a 500k team. There are a few players missing from my club because I've sold them on as I've now upgraded this squad. I'll talk you through a few upgrades. Basically, I've put Van Dyke in, so that meant I had to change players for chemistry. But I used this team in six division rivals games, and we won every single one. It was unbelievably overpowered. The defence is okay, but it's all about going forward, and you'll see about it uh, then. One thing we have noticed is that 55% of people that view these videos actually are not subscribed. So if we can get that number up, drop a subscription on this video and try and save that ratio. And of course, you'll get to see loads more excellent FIFA 21 content over the coming months if you hit that subscribe button. Nonetheless, we're going to get into this video. We're going to start off with our goalkeeper, who is Lukas Hudodetschki. This guy is amazing. Now, I would like someone, if you know how to speak his, uh, in his Finnish dialect... How would you say his name? Is it Urodetschki? I've always, you know, th thought that would be how you'd over-enunciate it. But is it Horodetschki? Is it just Horodeki? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, there's no accent on the C, so I, I'm not sure. But let me know in the comments down below. Nonetheless, this guy is a six foot four diving reflex saving machine. He may lack a bit of speed, so don't get me wrong. He's not going to come flying out, but... You shouldn't need it. He's got 85 diving and 87 reflex and strong positioning, whilst also being six foot four, which is great. Um, his long throw uh, trait I didn't actually take advantage of, and I think I wish I had. Um, comes for crosses. He does do. He comes for corners a lot. Sometimes it helps. Sometimes it doesn't. But he's massive, and he is an excellent, genuinely excellent shot stopper. So well worth picking him up. Um, definitely try him as your goalkeeper. There's not many cheaper goalkeepers that I think will do um, do a better job. Now, in terms of our right back, now this is one that I did mention um, was one that we sold on. So, as I've now got Van Dijk on the right-hand side of this team, I had to sadly shift um, my Bundesliga right-hand side out. So, Mbappe is no longer in the team. But... I picked him up for around 17k, I believe, at the time, um, just when he was extinct. Uh, in fact, no, it's 14k, I believe. Um, but really pacey player, good physical, excellent on the ball um, for for a kind of starting right back at the start of FIFA. Um, nice, nice, well-rounded stats. So I said his stamina is great, so he'll bomb up and down that right hand side for you all day of the week without ever getting tired. It's not a problem. He will literally just keep doing his doggies up and down the right hand side of the pitch. Dribbling is more than adequate for what you need him to do. Uh, maybe his uh, short and long passing could be a little bit better, especially when you're trying to play balls down the line. You occasionally notice the long passes aren't incredibly accurate, but just don't get him to do it. It's pretty much as simple as that. This team also does play in-game as a 4-2-3-1, and I will show you our custom tactics at the end of the video so that you have an idea um, of just how to set them up. But then in terms of our right centre-back, we go for a man that needs no introduction into FIFA or the footballing world. Um, sadly, he's no longer in my club. Um, he is one that, again, I just shifted on because Virgil van Dijk plays in this position. So why would I need to have Jerome Boateng in my club? The answer is, is quite simple. I wouldn't. Um, so I shifted Jerome Boateng on, but he was an excellent servant to this squad. I was actually impressed at just how good he is, um, despite all the downgrades and the changes to his ratings and whatnot. He's still got 70 pace, but he's a six foot four height machine, which is great. I feel like crosses are a little bit more uh, useful this year, so he's good at defending them. And your corners, people are scoring headers from corners and he is definitely going to help to stop it. He's got a four-star weak foot, which means he can sit on that right-hand side, but he can also turn around, he can use his left. I think it's really important this year. Composure at the back is vital, absolutely vital. And you want to make use of a, a defender that's got above 70 passing. So uh, being able to use both feet and not worry under pressure or any panic is really, really important to the team. And um, he complements our other centre-back really nicely, who is a bit quicker, but he's a little bit shorter, so they're a really nice kind of little and large uh, combination. Um, but he's still got enough pace to kind of keep up with with the rest of the rest of the squad. But Akanji is our left centre back. Again, super quick player, 77 pace, six foot two in height. His defensive stats are lovely. Good standing tackle, good sliding tackle. Um, he's got good jumping as well, so he can extend that six foot two a little bit higher. His short pass and long pass is actually 
better than Kevin and Barbu's, which is just mind blowing. I don't understand how it's possible. He's again really composed on the ball. Um, it's a freestyle weak foot means you're a little bit more limited in where you can pass, but. It shouldn't be too much of an issue as long as you, uh, you you do what you need to do with him. You you shouldn't be struggling. Just do your simple stuff. Let him win the ball back and focus on him. Uh, you know, just getting the ball to players who are maybe a little bit more creative. Then at left back we have Nico Schultz. He is twelve thousand seven hundred and fifty coins to purchase. Five foot eleven, so a little bit on the shorter side, um, but. Absolute machine again on the left. Uh, 87 pace is, is rapid, as I'm sure you guys know. Good dribbling, good defending, good physical. Lovely, well-rounded stats. Um, his attacking work rate of high means he does like to get up and down that pitch. But I stick him on to stay back while attacking through the custom tactics. And he does do exactly that. He will stay where you want him to stay. And he will do what you tell him to do. He's a, he's a, he's a well-disciplined guy when you make him stay back. In terms of his stats... Defending, again, really, really well-rounded. His physicals are not too bad. He's got decent stamina. His strength's pretty good. And again, his, his passing's not, it's an improvement on the, the right-hand side. He's got good short and long passing. You can ping him down that side. And when he's got his full chemistry, they get a little boost too. So you're just on 80 passing, basically. Um, and he's, you know, like I said, doing your, your long through balls, which are oh so overpowered this year. Unbelievably so. And then we have our midfield. Now, these two act in a two of a defensive midfield in a 4-2-3-1. First up is Emery Chan. He is our, our left-sided um, defensive midfielder, and he acts as more of our actual anchor who sits back and doesn't really do his box-to-box -box work. So I have Emery Chan set to stay back while attacking. He also has a higher defensive work rate, so he does just sit kind of at the base of that midfield. 83 defending and 87 physicals are they're off the chain, really. And you can see when you look at those physical stats, jumping 87, stamina 88, strength 86, aggression 88. Unbelievable. And then his sliding tackle 84, sta uh, sorry, standing tackles 86, uh, slide tackles 80 when they both get the plus four. So unbelievable defensive. But then all of his, his, his technical stats are, are beautiful. They're really well-rounded. He's a beast, to be honest with you. Um, got one assist. That's obviously where he played a bit of a long ball over the top or, or maybe found himself further up the field at a corner or something like that but a really really useful player in your squad and you will definitely enjoy enjoy him in that that middle of the park then we're going to introduce you now to our other defensive midfielder this is the one who has a bit more of a license to to play um and that is musa sissoko you see he's got two assists um he's got four star uh, three star skills three star weak foot um, he is your proper box to box. He's got high attacking, high defensive work rate, decent pace. His physicals are off the chain. As we go across here, you'll see 90 strength, 91 stamina, 85 aggression. This guy will literally just run backwards and forwards all day long. He's got good passing when he gets onto the ball. His ball control and dribbling are great. He's a really actually good central midfielder once he's won that ball back. But also he'll be there to support Emre Chan. He's got 70 acceleration, so it's important that you can kind of help him get up to his full speed with his longer strides. Uh, but once he does, he's he's a great player and um, really does kind of tie that midfield together. Uh, you aren't ever going to be in a position where you know they're, they're being outstrengthed by a midfielder. It just doesn't happen. There's no one stronger as a pairing than these two. They are really, really strong in midfield and quick and technical. They are... They're the dream midfield. They really, really are. And then we're going to have a player who plays actually, even though he's a left midfielder, he's in centre mid on six chemistry, but it's worth it uh, because then when we go into 4-2-3-1, um, he sits on the left side of our three, the central 4-2-3-1. This guy has unbelievable stats. Three goals scored, five assists from left midfield is all you can ask for. Eight goal contributions. That That's more than enough. He's rapid with his 93 pace. He's got four-star skills, so you can cut inside really easily with him. Um, his shooting is lovely. Uh, you know, Like I said, he'll come inside, and you've got that option with his right foot where you can either play it to the edge of the box, you can play it in the middle of the box, or you can just whip it into that corner, um, and he does that uh, with an absolute plum. Um, passing's great. Curve's quite interesting. I always find that an interesting stat, but it's, it's useful when you're bending your through balls to your striker. Fruit for pace and getting on the end of balls is so important this year. So, you know, it's one to look out for. And then dribbling stats. They are just unbelievable. They are everything you could ask for in your, your winger. And he, he, like I said, he does it beautifully. Now we're going to go on to um, a guy that needs no introduction. That's Alan St. Maximan. He plays in our left uh, forward role at the start of the game but then when we get to our custom tactics he moves into our central attacking mid and I haven't actually seen his goal contribution so I'm interested to see 
that he has nine goals, four assists, playing an attacking mid. That's 13 goal contributions in six games. Genuinely unbelievable. He's got high attacking, low defensive work rates. That's fine. I'd stick him on stay forward, and that's all you want him to do. His shooting might only be 70, but you wouldn't know. He's finishing 67, which is madness to me. But shot power's high, and you can bang shots in this year. Really can absolutely smash them. Uh, his dribbling's good. Um, obviously it's good, he's got his 5 star skills but the, the stats that you're here to see are his, 80, uh, his 93 agility his 87 balance and his 91 dribbling, this guy is a machine, really absolutely love him and he's, he's rapid as hell um, 4 star skills, uh, 4 star weak foot with his 5 star skills to, to complement them beautifully, I picked him up at 45k he's now had an inform going to PAX as of um, now when I'm recording, I'm recording at 10 o'clock on Wednesday his inform went into packs today, so this card will rise in price this week whilst it's not in packs. So um, if you bought it already, now is a good time to buy it, uh, to sell it. Wait until kind of next next Monday, Tuesday when everyone's sweating the game out. Um, but when that's done, maybe then pick him up. Or if you've got some extra coins, just pick him up, go for it and, and enjoy him. He'll be a lot of fun in your team. Next up on the right-hand side, we have a player that um, I definitely would be open to uh, trying out an alternative um, in this position. He's someone that I, I picked up already and he does link um, nicely for this squad, but I definitely, you know, I'm not tied down to using him. I enjoyed him a lot in game. He got six goals, seven assists, but I've also used him in another squad as well, which you guys may have seen. Um, I'm a really big fan of this card. He, he does does the job for me. He's left-footed, but I'm also an Arsenal fan, so I'm completely well aware that, that there probably are better options. I'm impressed at his kind of coin-for-coin coin, um, you know, ability. He cost me 8,000 coins, and he's a really good 82-rated Premier League winger. Um, so no major complaints from me there, but his weak foot is undeniably non-existent. So um, you can't use his weak foot. You've got to focus on his left, which is fine for the way this team played, where he's coming in from the right-hand side, but... If you did need that that right foot, he's not going to do you well. So if you have more coins, there are definitely lots of options in the Premier League you could probably look to. Um, and maybe a French player as well might, might be able to make it work. But I use Pepe. He did the job for me. I'm a fan of Pepe, so it worked in my game. But I completely understand why a lot of people might not necessarily want to use him. But a big part of why he works in this team is because he does, of course, get the strong link to our striker, which is Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Now, he cost me 294k, which is a lot of coins in any squad. He's played in nine games. We've so played a couple extra games in a different squad. But he's got 12 goals, six assists, you know, 18 goal contributions in nine games. That's, that's two goal contributions a game. You can't ask for anything more in your striker. This team, you know, we've spent a little over half on your striker, but I think that's important to do so. This year, there's no point forking out insane money on your defence. Get a good overpowered defence to start off with and use that as the base to go forward. We've got two expensive midfielders, and then we've got some really good attacking midfielders as well in St. Maximan, Coman, Pepe, and then you put the bulky money into a big star striker. That's how I think you should set your teams up this year, um, and that's that's how we, we've done it. Um, I'm just going to quickly remove these concept players out of the squad so I can show you how we're set up in custom tactics because I think it is it is important to to take a look at that just so you have um, you know a bit of an idea of, of how that's working. These FIFA menus are so laggy today as well. It's, it must be that everyone is just piling onto the game because it's hard work. But um, the way we set up. Uh, it's already set up here. We have a 4-2-3-1. Um, currently, I play the defensive version on drop back with depth going back by one. I think, you know, I, players are getting in behind so much. It's cheesy to use drop back, but it's the most effective way to play. So I do this kind of to start off with. Uh, but we have position and then we have the players in the box at the right amount, width a little bit wider. In terms of how we set up, that needs to slightly change because I've just put the players in and we've changed the squad. But this is how we then play in-game. Obviously, we don't have Van Dijk and Kyle Walker. You know who would be in those positions. That was Boateng and Mbappé. But obviously, because of concepts, they had to be taken out. I don't know if it would have saved all of our roles because I had to build this into a different squad. But primarily, um, Aubameyang will be set to stay central and get in behind. Um, St. Maximan will be on stay forwards. And they usually keep everything else the same. Um, Kingsley Coman is on stay forward and he is on the drift wide and same for Nicolas Pepe where I like to just spread them out when they you know they give them the freedom to do so they don't always do it they will come and give St Maximan options um, but it just works nicely for me and then we have Emery Chan to stay back while attacking both guys on cover centre um, and uh, in this one I have neither of them on stay back while attacking but quite often I'll, I'll make my full backs have, have uh, stay back while attacking sorry in this one their positional freedom and then we have the slightly more attacking 
attacking version in the 4 2 3 1 which is press after possession loss, higher depth, higher players in the box. This usually comes on when we're, uh, not not as soon as we go 1-0 down, as soon as we maybe go 2 down or if it's getting a little bit later in the game. I try not to, to do this unless I really need to, but also it's a lot of fun when you're two goals up to switch to this. It's not something I'd recommend doing if you want to guarantee the win, but it does make for some fun gameplay at the end of a match. So that's, that's how the team's set up. We're going to go to some clips now and we'll talk a little bit more about how I work with the team. So the way, the way we play mainly, um, obviously like I said, we, we have the defence and we try and keep them as, as deep as possible because, to be completely honest with you, I find it impossible to defend on this game. Every game I play is like 5-3, 4-2, 3-1. I'm winning. I'm winning loads of games because I, I feel really confident going forward, especially with this team. You've got attacking prowess in players like St. Maximan, Aubameyang, people like that. Um, but then you've got someone like Pepe um, who, who's, who's sticking out wide. So you've got that option there. It, there's there's loads of just really cool attacking prowess, but I can't defend. Now I am going to use this team with Kyle Walker and Van Dijk in soon, and maybe we'll see if my luck will change. I'm sure having players like that, hopefully it will. Otherwise, there's no point spending you know 600k on the pair of them. Walker wasn't untradeable, so that's why that's why he's in the team. But this this team is all about, like I said, having your defensive structure that you just try and win the ball back, and then focus on you've got two players really far out wide, spread the ball out to them really stretch the play and then when they get into a better position come into St Maximan and just give him the, the lay of the land and then you can use his skills his agility his dribbling to try and beat a defender but then also set up a Bamiyang and go that little extra leg to, uh, to, to to do something special with the team because there is opportunity to do some crazy crazy attacking stuff Loads of cool players in the team, and it's a lot of fun to use. I'm a big fan of it. But that, that's uh, that's the end of this 500k score builder. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe, of course, if it is your first time watching. As always, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.